Hi, Paul here from Trek It, and we're upstairs in the Hereford shop in our lovely tent and rucksack showroom just to talk to you today about the Terranova Southern Cross 2 tent. Now this tent took its design cues and its heritage from their famous laser range of tents so you can be assured that it's built around you know, a good foundation and a good design philosophy. So what is it for? It's designed as a four season lightweight two man backpacking, travel, bike packing, motorcycle travel, whatever you want, anywhere where you want to keep your pack size and your weight to a minimum because generally you're going to be carrying it but you still want plenty of room and space for two people. So what you get with the tent is you get a uh, fully siliconized and PU coated ripstop fly sheet which is fully taped seams for a fully waterproof fly you get a very simple pole system. Now the, the beauty of this pole system is that it's on the outside of the tent, so it's very quick and easy to put up. I won't bore you with the, the, the technicalities of how to put the tent up, needless to say that it is very quick and easy. Harry was just saying that uh, this was the first time he put one of these up um, without instructions, typical bloke. Uh, he managed to get the tent up in about three or four minutes, so very simple. So you've got one unified pole section, which are the red poles here, and very easily they attach to the red tape points at the bottom. And then creating the single arch over the top of the tent here, you've got a blue pole, uh, which, funnily enough, attaches to the blue sections at the bottom of the tape there. So very quick and easy to put up. And once it's up, it is in fact self-standing. I mean, we've got it Velcroed down to the floor at the moment, but I could pick this up and move it around uh, when you're selecting your campsite. So you can find you know, less rocky areas, less boggy areas. You can move the tent around nice and easily without the whole thing collapsing and having to re-pitch each time. And obviously it means that you can pitch the tent to suit the prevailing conditions because what you're looking to do is maximise the airflow through the tent to avoid condensation. Now I'm going to talk briefly about condensation. It's something we get asked an awful lot about in the shop and uh, it, it seems to be uh, a perennial problem. And the reason for that is, is because it is a perennial problem. Condensation will occur in your tent. That's a given. It's physics. Basically you breathe out warm air and if that meets some colder, damper air on the outside of the tent, it will condense on the inside. That is just physics, that's going to happen. So what you need to do is to maximise the airflow through the tent to make sure that that warm air can escape and that the airflow is, is coming through the tent at all times. Probably the worst thing you can do is completely zip the whole tent up on a warm, muggy night. You're inside, chucking out a load of warm air. There's a lot of warm, moist air on the outside. That's just going to just gonna condense. There's nowhere for it to go. So keep the doors open, use the uh, vents within the tent and just try and be sensible and use a bit of common sense and just accept that you will get some condensation but look to minimise it as much as you can. Okay, so back to the tent. We've got the unified pole system, we've got the single blue pole. It's a two-man tent. Admittedly, it's a bit of a squeeze but they've done that to keep the weight down. You can get two people in here comfortably. We'll demonstrate that a bit later. You also get two entrances and two storage areas. So the tent is kind of symmetrical from this center line onwards. The inner tent hangs right in the middle and you get two separate storage areas either side. So when you first get the tent out of the bag, the, the, the inner and the outer are connected together. So when you first put it up, boom, it all goes up in a wanna. And that's the best way to, to, to pitch the tent. And if you're moving from site to site, day after day, keep it connected. If you wanted to uh, separate the inner for any reason, if you wanted to dry it out if it was getting wet, or if you wanted to reduce the weight of the tent for minimalist camping, you can simply unclip it from the inside. There's a loop and toggle system throughout the tent and you can simply remove the inner. That will leave you with the uh, self-standing fly sheet and then you could use uh, either a lightweight tarp or a footprint to sleep on and that will give you a very minimalist camping experience. So the overall weight of the tent, with the inner and the outers, the pegs, the poles, the guys, everything is about 2.2 kilos. Harry will put the exact specification up on screen. Um, and so it's, it's a really sensible, lightweight, four season tent. If you split that between two of you, it's only just over a kilo each, you know, or if you're just going solo, 2.2 is not really that much weight to carry. 
uh, and you get a really roomy, comfortable solo tent. So here's one, one main entrance here, it's replicated exactly the same on the other side and each entrance you can see has got two zip pullers with the little yellow cord pulls on there. So as I was saying about uh, condensation earlier, you can unzip this from the top and allow some condensation in here, allow, allow it to escape, sorry, let, let the air flow through. And then to access the main tent, unzip from the bottom. And this has got a little plastic clip on the bottom here, you simply take this, clip it up onto the pole, like so, and that holds your door back. So you've got a nice big storage area here. You can see we've got a, uh, one of our Deuter 50 litre packs in here, so that'll give you some idea of the size. That fitted in really nicely, tucked up to one side, still leaving space here for sort of wet and muddy boots, something like that. Chuck that out of the way. So access into the sleeping area is through, again, a double zip door, which once it's zipped open, simply rolls back. But you can see at the top section here, this is all mesh at the top, same on the other side, exactly the same on the other door, so that helps to improve the ventilation, keep that airflow going, and it also just means any little nasty bugs and things aren't going to come creeping and crawling into your bedroom. So simply roll that away, and there's a couple of cord little toggles here, just to secure that door once it's rolled up, like so. And then you can see in here, that we have got two sleep mats, we've got an X-bed winter light mat and we've got one of the new Sea to Summit sleep mats as well. Now the assumption is you're going to be doing some lightweight travelling or camping or backpacking with this so use a lightweight mat in here. These are both tapered mats and they fit in really well in that top to toe position so the wider part against the toe vice versa. But there's plenty of room in there for two people. Uh, I'm six foot three uh, and I'm going to get in here now and I'll, uh, I'll give you an overview of what the space is like. Okay, so that's me lying down fully in the tent. Like I said, I'm six foot three and I had uh, you know, a good six inches of my head and my toes. My toes didn't feel as if they were touching the inner tent at all. My head was well away from it. So there's bags of room in here for two people. And you can also see that when I'm sat in the doorway here, you've got plenty of headroom. You can admire the sunset if you've uh, pitched your tent accordingly and uh, you can just sit here, have a brew, and enjoy your bit of wild camping. So inside this great little lightweight two-man tent, you get some, some useful but minimal features. You get a couple of storage pockets, one on opposite side of the other tent, which just reinforces that you should be sleeping head to toe, just to maximize the space. You get a couple of little uh, webbing loops up in the ceiling here, which you can attach a piece of accessory cord to dry your socks or hang your, um, your head torch or your lantern from. And then at either end of the inner tent are two mesh ventilation panels which have a, a simple fabric velcro closure so you can expose that to get that airflow moving again or close it up if you're getting a bit chilly and a bit drafty. So pretty minimal. Uh, I should at this point mention the ground sheet. It's a good heavy duty ground sheet. It's designed to uh, withstand some pretty serious use as is the tent on a whole really. And also with this tent as a special offer from Trek It, we are offering the uh, footprint uh, at half price. Thank you Harry. There you go. So this footprint uh, covers the entire footprint, funnily enough, of the tent. So that does extend out into the vestibule areas both sides. Now we always recommend carrying a footprint. Yes, I know it adds a few extra grams of weight but it's well worth it to protect the ground sheet from abrasion, from sharp rocks, from thorns, sharp twigs, that kind of thing and it also gives you a fully protected vestibule area. And also if you've got one of these you can strip out the inner, just use the fly and the footprint for absolute minimal sort of uh, tarp wild camping. Keep that weight to right down, keep it super lightweight. So, uh, you know, man up, carry the weight, it'll just protect your tent and uh, keep it in good nick for years and years. So on the outside of each end of the Southern Cross, you've got this black panel here, which covers up a mesh ventilation panel. This can also act as an additional guide point and if obviously if you see if you've got this guide out down to here it opens this panel right out. If you don't want to have that open you can just close that down, a little bit of velcro there keeps that secure. Okay so there you have it, that's the uh, turnover 
Southern Cross 2, lightweight two-man backpacking tent, all season use, nice and strong and sturdy, reliable, built on great heritage and, uh, and a sensible weight and pack size as you can see. Give you some comparison, there's a one litre Nalgene bottle, so it's what twice as long and probably twice as fat. Uh, split that between the two people and you'd hardly notice it in your pack at all. So what's in the bag? Obviously there is the fly sheet and the inner. You get some sewn in pitching instructions on the top there. To be honest once you've pitched this a couple of times you can you can take those out forget about them they're just are annoying flapping around in the top there. Just showing you these this is the the pole bag and there's an extra little pocket on the outside of the pole bag which contains the pegs like so. I think there should be some guy rails in there as well. I'll rummage around to find them. There we go. So you get four guy lines, two long, two short. So the long ones go onto the blue pole, that's the transverse pole, and the shorter ones you'd use to open up those ventilation panels at the end. And uh, turnover give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pegs. So you've got enough there just to peg out all the pegging points and the guy lines. If you want to do any additional pegging or add any of your own guy lines, I'd always advise you to take some extra pegs anyway to give those additional points. But just in case you break a peg or you bend a peg beyond all repair, it's always worth having some spare ones. We've got a wide range of MSR pegs available, lightweight to heavyweight. And we also do some spare MSR guy lines Again, it's always worth taking a couple of extras because you can, in really foul, windy weather, you can attach extra guides to the poles system just to give you extra stability. So always take extra pegs, always take a couple of extra guy lines. Also lurking in here, you've got the, the poles. I won't get those out and bore you with those. But lurking in here, you get a little pouch and that gives you your owner's manual, that gives you some care tips, some advice on pitching and uh, about the fabrics, etc. So always worth a little read. And then tucked away inside this little pouch or in the other pocket, you'll find this little blue pipe. So this end you've got the hook, you can use that as a bottle opener. You've got a little hole at the top here. And I think what I'd do with that is I would hook that through as a handle and then you could use that to extract any stubborn pegs and then this little slot at the top you can use to remove the pole tip if it becomes damaged or broken. So there you have it, that's the uh, Southern Cross 2. Great little tent, really reliable, super strong, all year round, lightweight. And uh, as always, please add your comments or questions below. It's always good to hear from you. And uh, this is Paul signing off. See you again next time.